Hi, Francisco. How are you doing? Hello, Roberto. Nice to see you again. Nice Very to see you to again. See. Well, you are in Chile right now. And yesterday, we just had the, the, the votation, the referendum for the approval or not of the Chilean constitution. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, they are, we are very happy for both things. First, we, defer, we defeat this uh, very extreme uh, project of, for a new constitution. That's the first. And the second reason is that the old Chileans that they want to reject that proposal are very united and saying to the people who lost that referendum, don't be afraid. We want to be together, to work together in a new constitution in the future, according to the current constitutional rules. We're not going to let you down. We want to do things with your agreement, with the agreement of the whole country. Let's do it together. And that's the second good reason. We're not in the middle of class fights when you don't see people fighting in the streets. You don't see any kind of problems down the, down the streets. And, and that is very good reason. That's a great that's a great news. Well, we had the chance of talking previously about the idea of constitution. And it's important to mention the people. Probably there's a lot of people that doesn't study law and specifically constitutional law, the idea and the notion of constitution, what a constitutional is. And a constitution is restraining power. Because if we think only about the constitution of a list of rights that you would like to exercise. Probably you need, of course, to recognize some, some rights, but the main part of this is controlling the power. You're living in Chile. You have there more than 400,000 Venezuelan citizens. And we know, I know what a, a constitutional use for, uh, for changing the power but it's being used as a political tool, as an ideological instrument. Tell us a little bit of the context in Chile of the idea of constitution. Yes, of course. As everybody knows, a constitutional, it's an instrument. It's the, the main legal rule in the country for, I think, let's say, two main purposes. The first is, of course, to separate the power, to control the, these powers among them. I'm talking about the executive power, of course, the power that has the president of the country. Second, of course, the legislative power and, the, of course, the judicial power. These three powers of a nation, of a country, has to must be control among them. And there's only one legal instrument called constitution, which is the most important law to do that. And I think that the second purpose of a uh, constitution, special not only for, remember that the uh, Carta Magna was created in the uh, year of um, 1215. And it was created the most important, the most important uh, legal field that I think is what the habeas corpus and contained very important uh, rights. And that's why it's called the Bill of Rights. And, and that's my point. My point is that a constitution is also to recognize some superior rights that any people has and put it in the constitution and nobody, no person, no authority, authority politician can any, at any time forget about it. It's, it's to protect their rights. And that is the second purpose. And 
and that's the most important. And you cannot try to put everything. It's only the most important rights in a, in a text of a constitution. And it doesn't mean that they don't develop down under with legislation. But the thing is that here, let's say, not Latin America, but in general, during the 21st century, a lot of people think that a constitution is a is a list of rights that you just have to put them there. And then you, you clash with the reality that it's impossible to accomplish it all at the constitutional level. It doesn't mean that you don't have to recognize those rights. And the most important part, because of course, recognition of rights is really important, but the check and balances, because what happens if you don't pay attention of that check and balances and you only go and see behind the rights that is important to have that in mind, what you see is that the power, it gets more and more and more power. And what happens in societies like in Venezuela and talking about this, this restraining powers and the rigidity of the constitution, this morning I heard the news that there are some sectors in Chile that they consider that the function of the assembly of the convention still is in force. What do you think about that? No, that is, that is out of the law. We have uh, a current constitution the current constitution who is in force, who is in force. And the referendum who is being uh, taking place the day of yesterday, put an option. The option was to approve this proposal or reject it. And to do that, it was necessary to amend that uh, the constitution. The, the current constitution and it says very clearly that in case of rejection the current constitution will enforce so the current constitution is actually and will be enforced unless all the country all the people decided to do uh, a new process or a new constitution, but that rules to go again on a new process has to be decided, has to be voted, even for the citizens, but pay attention to this. The, the, the mechanism, it's on the constitutions, and it says that has to be for, approved for the Senate and the representatives which is called diputados or deputates, but it's the more accurate word is representatives, okay? And the Senate, and they will call, on, they will call another referendum to uh, do anything. So the people who are saying that are the people who lost. They don't want to recognize that they lost and that's it. Yes, yes, I know it happens the same here. And well, when I'm telling you here, here in Venezuela, because we have, you know, a lot of experience in uh, constitutional tragedies, if we can say that word. And I recently used this expression that was constitutional intuition. And it was to refer that, that sometimes we recognize that each state, each country has the right of his own, own constitution. But there are some things that they're calling against the constitution, but they are not. For instance, if not necessary at all to read the constitution of North Korea to understand it's not democratic at all. So the same could happen here. Or for instance, the constitution of Monaco. It's not necessary to go to Monaco and to read the constitution of Monaco to realize that it's more democratic than the one in North Korea. So a lot of people from out of Chile couldn't understand probably what's going on in Chile. For instance, if you read the news in English in the United States, what they were doing and they were thinking about the, the, the this uh, referendum, 
they were against, they were in favor. They had the, the idea, the notion that it was a, a garbage constitution because we were talking previously about the remark and the information in one of the newspaper, important newspapers that probably they had it wrong. Probably they have a perspective different like the one that I can have living in Venezuela and is studying constitutional law in Venezuela. Tell us a little bit how this event, important event on constitutional history in Chile has been seen from other other medias or other states. Well, when I read what what is written in the um, abroad news, I, I think that it, it's totally um, full of, of lies. And they don't do an accurate uh, work. Some medias do, but most of them don't. But that is it. It's it's a reality. I cannot fight against that. I I wanted to tell you what what is going on in Chile. What is people thinking? Why they wanted so desperately to to change the constitution? And that is for for two for two main reasons. First, they think that a new constitution's constitution is going to solve all their current social and economic problems. And of course, those are problems are real, and everybody in Chile has had them in a minor or, or bigger uh, quantity. Because we are not a developed country, we are we are fighting to do that. But people are very wrong when they think that if you put every kind of solution and every kind of rights in a constitution, you are going to solve your problems. And that's a problem mostly of the Latin American people. If you go to America, United States, people people doesn't think that way. Let me put you an example with the Obamacare, with the so-called Obamacare. What, what was Obamacare? Obamacare was uh, a health insurance problem, okay? And same problem we have, in, we have a very, very important issue with our health insurance situation because um, health insurance are high and they have a very expensive uh, price and people want to receive those services at a lower price and there are people who are not in those private pay attention to this people that are not included on that private and they want to accede to those uh, private system, to that private system. And pay even more attention to this. Most of the people doesn't want to go to public system because they want that system in health is very bad. Okay, people in Latin America think that if you put that in a constitution, that will solve the problem. And in the United States, they understand that is something that you don't have to put it in a constitution. And I put the Obamacare because they didn't put that in a constitution. They fight uh, Republicans against Democrats very hard to solve that issue. And of course, I am I'm not an expert well, on, that... Uh, on, on that problem. And seeing is it's a legal issue. It's a legal problem, huge problem, which is still pending at the Supreme Court. And it's they're still trying to solve everything about it. My point is, it's not something that you will solve that uh, as a matter that has to be a right on the constitution. Okay, so, but in Chile, 
in Chile and in other Latin American countries, they think that they can solve their health problems, their insurance health problems, putting a constitution. That is my first reason. Well, so I, 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 I don't want to to keep talking because I have a, a, oh. a second reason. But I, I, I want that you talk. No, no, you, you, you were saying this, and in my mind, I was thinking a lot of people think and believe that the constitution is like a magical instrument, that everything that you put there automatically is going to be solved, and of course there are things that they are gen, gen, uh, genuine that we have to take care of public health, we have to take care of that, all right? Or the health in general, or education in general, public, private, semi-public, semi-private, that's another thing. But what scares me the most is that this belief that the constitution is a magical thing, you have this huge constitution of 450 articles. And then you put things like, like the, the gastronomy and things that, It's really important, but if you put it there, you are diminishing the you are the, the, taking the importance of other things that are really have to put there. The idea of health, the idea of of uh, of uh, banking, well, not banking, the financial system in general, or the idea of education, has a issue that we have to solve, either private, publicly, or both. All right, but 400 articles 300 articles that's that's a shame i mean that's 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 taking that's not paying attention what are really important things are in a constitution and a constitution don't you think that yes and unfortunately around the world they laugh about us take 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 an example here of this uh paper of the economist which is an important business magazine and Look what they said here. The, the document talking about this uh, project of um, this draft of constitution, they say it is ridiculous broad. It says the state should promote the culinary and gastronomic heritage of Chile and recognize spirituality, spirituality sorry, as an essential element of the human being. So this is was written by, by the economist uh, on September the truth, which is just a few days ago. So, and, so, so they laugh about us. They yes. laugh about us. Wow. Well, and, and it has terrible effects that like happens to us in Venezuela. And another thing is no one is not saying that that's not important. Culture is important. Health is important. Finance is important. But you can't put a list of things in a constitution because it diminishes the importance of check and balances. That's that's the most important part. The check, yeah, this, again, let's go to the check and balance system. And it, it, it's what makes work the control system against the the uh the, the judicial power the, the legislative power and the executive power indeed it's like that francisco soon in few days couple of weeks couple of months what can we expect from the, the 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 constitutional life in chile what do you think is going to come right now the political act tensions what what can you tell us about a little bit about it first Um, the country need to rest because there are millions of people uh, in relief after all this tension. Don't, don't forget that this proposal was trying to divide the country. You asked me, and I want to finish my, my two points, You, you you asked me about um the the reasons that this this was created and I mentioned one point and I want to mention the second uh purpose of uh that I was talking that's the importance of the constitution and that said I, I didn't say it and I want to say now that the the Chilean constitution as in some other countries Bolivia Venezuela special 
and I said some way in Colombia, was try to use as a left wing and uh, Marxist instrument to implant a very ideological political project. It's not that only a thing of to put many rights, which of course, as you say, it's a huge mistake. It's, it's, it's not only about that. It's only that they were using the constitutions trying to make what is for me a real class fight. It's a instrument for the left-wing people, the extreme left-wing people, trying to impose their idea, trying to create of Chile, which is one of the most uh, prosperous countries in Latin America, to create a, a new Venezuela, a new Bolivia. But thanks to us, we have, as you said, 450 thousand Venezuelans remind us every day every day that they are here not because they want because they were forced to leave their country so we see what is going on in Venezuela we see those Marxist government we see what is going on in Cuba and in any Marxist country in the world and we said we don't want that. We need to improve some a lot of things, but we don't we don't want to do it in the socialist way. And that's the constitution project that was introduced. It has many, many very left extreme ideas. And um, thanks for everybody, thanks for the country. It has failed yesterday on the referendum. Um, um, I congratulate you and all Chileans. I have a lot of friends from Chile. Some of them used to live here, but they went back. They were uh, living here all their life. A lot of people lived in, in, in the United States. And I'm really happy to what happens, not only for you guys, but for all of us, because there is a hope that a lot of people is realizing what's going on and how constitutionalism is being used as a horse of Troy for ideological experiments. Francisco, I would like to I would like to thank you for your words and for your 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 perspective from the real place where it's taking uh, all this happening. Um, I know we will have soon some other talks. Thank you. Thank you again. As um, I want to answer you very, very fast, your, your last question. Yes, we, we will have some days uh, to relax and some days to sing and to um, encounter the whole Chilean to, to think about um, a new constitution. Nobody say no to that idea because any constitution can be improved. There's no doubt about that but not something so absurd, so uh, nonsense, uh, like the, the trick that was voted yesterday. Well, thanks, and we keep in touch. Let's keep in touch, Roberto. It's real, uh, it's real a, a pleasure, big pleasure to be here with you today. The pleasure is mine. See you then. Bye. Bye. See you.